Welcome to the Profitable Speaking Podcast, where we help you build a profitable six-figure business from the stage. Here's your host, Mr. Web Marketing, Brad Hauck. Welcome to the latest episode of the Profitable Speaking Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be diving deeper into the nitty-gritty details of creating a sales funnel that converts. Specifically, we're going to be covering the essential elements that you need to have on your pop-ups, your landing pages, your thank you pages, and your download pages. Obviously, we broke down the basics of a sales funnel last episode, and in this one, we're going to dig a bit further. By the way, if you're taking your speaking career to the next level and you want to turn your passion into profits, make sure to subscribe to our podcast. With valuable insights and expert guests, this podcast will help you create a successful and profitable speaking business. Connect with a network of fellow speakers and industry professionals by sharing this show and hit the subscribe button now to start building your speaking empire with us. Okay, let's get ready to dive in and transform your business today with this game-changing episode. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out in the world of speaking, you, you know how crucial it is to have a sales funnel that's optimized for conversions. However, many business owners struggle figuring out exactly what they need to include on every page of their funnel. And that's where this episode comes in. By the end of the show, you'll have a solid understanding of what elements to include in each page of your funnel to increase conversions and to grow your business. So sit back, grab a notepad, and let's get started. First step is to getting people to take action and fill in their details. What you do here depends on whether you're showing it to people who are already on your website or you're running ads to a landing page on your website. So if people are already on your website, best thing you can do is use a pop-up. A lead capture pop-up is a type of pop-up that appears on your website and is used to collect information from visitors in exchange for an offer, such as a discount, free trial, or a lead magnet. And we've talked about lead magnets previously. The elements of a lead capture pop-up are critical for a success, and they include a clear headline. Okay, this is really important. The headline should grab the attention of the visitor and clearly communicate what you're offering. And literally, it should take effect straight away. The next thing you need is a strong call to action. So this is a little bit further information about what they're going to get in this lead magnet and how it's going to help them. Okay, It should be clear and actionable. In other words, using verbs that get people to do things and encouraging them to do the next step. Now, the Third part is to add some graphics that grab their attention. Now, it doesn't have to be a big picture or anything like that. It can be just a nice, neat icon that sits next to the text. So you might have your headline at the top, and then in two columns, you've got a picture and the text that is your call to action. And also, after that, you need a form to fill out. So obviously, keep the form simple. Okay, the more fields you have in there, the more friction you create between people filling in the form and not filling in the form. For example, ask for email or email and first name or email and more details. The more you ask for, the more it will lower your conversion. And this is true and tried and tested. And the last element is actually the timing and the triggers of the pop-up. So when people come to their page, do they get the pop-up straight away? Does it wait five seconds? Does it happen when they scroll down two paragraphs? If it's a landing page, they should probably pop up straight away. Okay. So have a think about when it's going to pop up. I recommend about two to three seconds and because I found that to be effective. Some people will back out quickly. That kind of captures the people leaving or if they stay, they get to see it anyway. By adding these elements to your lead capture pop-up, you can increase your conversions. And by increasing conversions, you grow your email list. Now, there's lots of variations on this that have been highly tested. For example, just having a headline and a button that says download on the initial pop-up. So this is like a two-step pop-up. When it first comes on, it has a headline and a button that says download now. And when they click that, it then takes them to a new pop-up or a reloaded pop-up, basically, second page. And on that page is a form for them to fill out to get the actual download. This is basically known as a slippery slope. Now, the studies have shown that they are more likely to fill out the form when they see it after clicking the button 
than if they just see the form on the initial screen. Why? Psychology. People see this step as an acknowledgement that they want to move forward. It's like a little initial agreement. And once they agree by clicking the download button, they're more likely to fill in the form. It's like, click this, oh, I'm obligated to go further. Now that might sound weird to you, but it's flat out truth. I've seen it tested, I've seen the numbers, and people do respond to this. They click the download easier than they fill in the form and click download. <laughs> Weird, yeah, but that's how humans are. This also works well for capture forms in between paragraphs. For example, on your blog, you can have a little form in there that has the download button that then pops up and brings up the form. So lots of versions of pop-ups. So you want to be having pop-ups in different places. So if you've got a blog, you want people to either get the pop-up or you have it in line in, inside the text, but it's up to you. I recommend just using pop-ups to start with before you start doing inline stuff. Now, second is that you use a landing page. So you have an ad and then you land people on that page. And on that page is actually the information that you would have had on the pop-up originally. So it's generally used when you send people from an ad. So it should contain the, these elements. First of all, you need a killer headline and subheadline. okay? This gets people to stay on the page and keep reading. And this is the most important part of the page. If your headline doesn't work, people won't continue down the page. It's so essential. Keep it simple. Talk to the person, tell them what they're going to get and use the language that the audience recommends. Hi, speakers. Do you want to get this landing funnel or whatever it happens to be? Okay. The next is to put some clear, unique value propositions down. So this is a clear and compelling message that highlights what sets your product or service apart from the competition and why customers should choose it. In this case, your product or service is actually your lead magnet. So why do they want this lead magnet? What's so good about it? Talk about some benefits, okay? Remember, we talk about benefits, not features. People want to know how the lead magnet is going to help them. If you've got some social proof, such as some testimonials or some little videos of people saying, hey, this was fantastic, I loved it, throw them in there as well. If there's any other potential objections, you might want to do an FAQ on that page, but don't put too much. Remember, this is a landing page. You want to try and keep it simple, a bit like with the pop-up. You don't want to go into too much detail because you're not actually selling a product, okay? You're just getting them to do a fill in the form and to use it to get the lead magnet. You need to make sure you have a call to action, okay, that motivates them towards taking that next step, such as clicking the download button or filling in the form. And also you need to use some urgency. Get it today and you can take action straight away. All those sorts of things are really important. By including these elements on your sales page, basically you create a compelling and effective sales funnel page that then drives the conversions and supports the growth of your business. So it just continues that effect. So you've got your pop-up or your landing page, and they both do the same thing. They get people to take action and fill in a form to get the lead magnet that you're giving away. So once they've filled in the form, they are then taken to a thank you page. And a thank you page is essential because it's the next step. If you just go and fill in the form and then you get the little message below the form saying, thank you for submitting, you're wasting a massive opportunity. Why? Some people won't see that message, so they don't know if the form submitted properly. And secondly, when you take them to a landing page, you can give them a whole new lot of stuff. So on the landing page, you need a confirmation message, okay? It needs to be clear and it needs to confirm acknowledging that the form was submitted successfully and that the lead magnet will be delivered to them shortly via a link in an email. This is really important. Don't put it there to be downloaded send them an email. That way you're verifying that the email address that they gave you is a real email address because they can't get it unless they give you the real one. So it helps stop getting just dodgy emails or cuts down anyway. Second thing you're going to have on thank you page is a video. A video might have a thank you message. It might be a personal touch talking about the lead magnet and how fantastic it is and how they're going to enjoy it. It increases the perception of value of what they're getting because they get to see you and there's that little bit of personal connection. 
Again, you can add in some social proof. You can add in links to blog articles and other stuff that's on your website. So you might pick the five top articles and link to those and say, here's something else you can read while you wait for your email. Okay. And if there's any other steps you want them to take, such as to schedule a call or something like that, or an upsell, you can also put that on this thank you page as well. Look, a thank you page, it's a key element in the sales funnel. And it's an opportunity to further engage with the people who filled out your form and to build that relationship with them. It's important that you use it because it develops trust. If they just go to a form and then they don't know what's going to happen next, you kind of leave them hanging in limbo. So taking them to a thank you page confirms they've done the right thing. It is on its way. You are going to get it. Here I am. I'm a real person. All that sort of stuff. The next page we need is actually our download page. So they've gone to the thank you page. Their emails arrived. They've clicked the link in the email and they go to the download page. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The first thing it needs is a clear and very prominent download button or link. Okay, it should be easy to see and to click so that the people can easily download their lead magnet. This is super important. Sometimes people hide the button in the text and all that. Just don't do it. No. Okay, you're going to annoy the heck out of people who have already taken a chance filling in the form. Just Give them what you promised and make it clear and easy for them. Second thing is the download page should contain the same branding as would have been on your landing page, your thank you page. So use the same colors, all those sorts of things. Obviously, on a landing page, normally you don't have menus and other things for people to click off too far. But on the download page, you can have all those sorts of things. If you want to, it's not a problem. You can have an upsell or a next step offer. So it might be, here's your lead magnet. By the way, the next step, if you want to go further with this, is to book a call with us or to, here's this little mini course we're offering as well, whatever it happens to be. Make sure your thank you page also has your contact information on it. So if it doesn't download properly or there's some issue with the PDF or whatever it is that you're sending them, that they can get in contact with you and you can send them a copy of it. And look, this doesn't happen very often. But it does happen. Some people just don't handle computers all that well. They download the PDF and then they can't find it. So it's worth having a contact form on there so that people can get hold of you or contact information. You can put some social sharing buttons on that download page, but make sure that do not share the download page. Send them to the landing page. If they share it, it takes the people to the landing page. You do not want to share your download page. Otherwise, people are just going to go round your pop-up form and you're not going to get anyone on your email list. The last thing you can have on there actually is some video content. And I've seen this used multiple ways. Sometimes people put four or five YouTube videos on there as more information, or they might do a special video for people when they download that says, hey, look, you're going to download this and included in here, you'll see these steps and if you do this first, and then my my suggestion is you do that, that, and it's a nice little rounding out of the whole process and gives people a little background on what it happens to be. Now, the download page might be the last page of your funnel, but hopefully it won't be the last contact you have with the people who downloaded your lead magnet. If you set up your follow-up emails, as discussed in the previous podcast episode 17, they will help build your credibility as they're sent out. Then you just need to set up a regular newsletter. And we obviously we don't call it a newsletter. We call it updates or something else. But essentially, it's what we've always known as a newsletter where you send out information to the people that you've captured to keep them educated about the topic that you're an expert in. So it might be tips. It might be links to new articles. It might be a video you found that you link to. You don't have to write everything yourself. You can actually curate information, but you need to be doing that regularly at least once a month to keep you in front of those people. Now, they might not need you today when they've downloaded the lead magnet, but in one year, two years, that person could be a $100,000 contract for you. Believe me, I've had it happen multiple times and many other small contracts from people who have stayed on my list kept reading my updates that helped them grow their business, in my case. And then when they or a friend needed help, I was top of mind and got the phone call. Okay. Sometimes they might not even open that email, but they see it come in. They see your name and it's just there. And I've heard this from multiple people who've said, I've stayed on this list because I just wanted to see what this person was doing. And then one day I had a problem and the first person I thought of was them. 
Having well-designed and optimized pop-ups, landing pages, thank you pages, and download pages can greatly impact the success of your sales funnel. By including all the elements we discussed, such as clear, concise messaging, strong calls to action, relevant offers, you can increase conversions, grow your email list, and build relationships with your leads. Remember, these pages are the first impression potential customers have with your brand. So make sure to put your best foot forward and design pages that will have a lasting impression. So now you've got all the basics of creating a sales funnel for your speaking business. Go out there and create your first funnel. Have a go, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's not perfect. You can improve it as you go along. In the show description, I've included a link to the software that I use. It's free to sign up and to build a funnel. And I promise you'll love it. Like it's really good. And they're just continuously adding features so that you can set up your sales funnel and lead it to an email list, or you can send people to courses. There's all sorts of stuff, but absolutely free. And you're going to, you're going to really like it. And there's lots of videos to help you do it. If you've enjoyed this podcast and found value in the information, the sales funnel for professional speakers, I'd be over the moon if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And hey, why not spread the love? If you know another speaker who could benefit from this information, please be sure to share this podcast with them. We are all about helping speakers grow their businesses and succeed. And with your help, we can reach even more people. So go ahead, hit the share button and help us make a difference. I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Speaking Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please help a friend and share it with them. Until next time, we hope you have a fun and profitable week.